Hey, this is Naveen. Um, I'm going to talk about a few points actually going in the other direction. So what Zach talked about was really about things that appear critical that may not actually be as critical as you think they are, you know, factoring in the context around the vulnerability. But it goes the other direction too. There are cases where something is actually more severe than it might appear. Um, so let me give some examples here. Everyone's probably familiar with Eternal Blue. The actual CVSS B3 score for this is 8.1, which is high. And that's really hard to believe um, because this has been commonly exploited. Um, it immediately grants remote code execution privileges as system on Windows boxes that are vulnerable to this. This should be treated as a critical. Um, and the reason it's flagged as a high is because of high attack complexity. Now, that may have been true at the time this was published, but there have been so many exploits for this. It's in Metasploit. It's commonly exploited. So this is an example where just using the base score of a CVSS doesn't really, you know, if you literally went by priority and treated this as a high instead of a critical, you'd be missing a major vulnerability that should be fixed if it's in your environment. Um, and in general, you know, we've seen lots of discrepancies in CVSS base scores um, and what the actual impact is. Um, for instance, uh, earlier or end of last year, um, we had filed a XSS vulnerability. And uh, when the National Vulnerability Database folks came back, they prioritized it as a medium. And that was really interesting to us because this particular vulnerability we had filed um, actually was full remote code execution. Like you can start unauthenticated and get to remote code execution on the server. And the fact was it wasn't a medium, it was actually close, it was critical basically. So we had to go back to the National Vulnerability Database folks and explain, hey, the true impact of this is critical. And they adjusted it. And it's really interesting to think about NVD and the and analysts and what and their job, they're, they're humans at the end of the day. They've got tons of vulnerabilities to go through. They've got to prioritize too. How are they going to go and really assign scores to all of these in an intelligent way? And they rely on community feedback to actually tune it. Uh, and so a lot of cases, vulnerabilities are just filed with kind of default scores that make sense maybe in the grand scheme of things. If you actually look at XSS vulnerabilities in general, a lot of them are just rated medium. Uh, but the true impact, it has to factor in what can you do with that vulnerability afterwards? Um, and that's what CVSS V3 scores are supposed to capture. But a lot of the times that feedback is missing or the analyst doesn't do the full analysis. There, there's a lot of things around that. Um, so that's those are examples there. Uh, another kind of gotcha to think about is what score is your one scanner reporting? Is it a CVSS V2 score or is it a V3 score? Um, V3 scores are supposed to factor in kind of the full impact. Like if there's an immediate impact to a vulnerability, that should factor in and elevate it. V2 scores are a little bit different. Um, so for instance, there was a big CVE last year, um, VMware vCenter um, one CVE 2020-3952. There is one Vuln scanner, I won't say which one, it'll report it as a medium. And this came up in an actual client engagement. Um, and the actual CVSS V3 score for this is 9.8, it's critical. And it truly is critical. We've exploited this multiple times through our product and manually and so forth. Um, it's a full takeover of vCenter if, you, if this is in your environment. However, your Vuln scanner, if, it, if it's not quite showing the data in the way you expect might report this as a media. So it's another thing to take into consideration when you're looking at what's being reported. There are also cases where low medium issues are actually more severe because they can be used in chains um, and enable further attacks. Um, so their true impact, maybe in that immediate moment where they're used, it's not critical but they may be critical in the sense that they enable something much bigger. Um, so a good example is SMB signing, right? Best practice in Windows environment is to enable SMB signing. And the reason for that is because if, if this isn't enabled, it can be used in SMB relay attacks. Um, a lot of Vuln scanners will flag this as medium, but the reality is if 
you know, if you're doing an internal pen test or an attacker is on the inside and they are able to relay uh, SMB and TLM hashes over the network to these uh, basically man in the middle that traffic and take advantage of SMB signing not being in place to get access to boxes, then this lower medium issue is actually enabling something much more critical. Um, another example uh, is username disclosure vulnerabilities. Um, so for instance, SMB null sessions um, is a way to um, authenticate, well, basically access information on the SMB service. Um, in most cases, it's harmless, but in some cases, if it's misconfigured, you can actually dump all the users in the domain off the domain controller with this. And that's a big part of the puzzle if you're going to be doing password spray attacks. So if you've got all the users in the environment from this you know, medium or low level vulnerability, depending on the impact, what can you actually do based on the configuration? There's a lot of things that um, this enables. So it's just a different way to think about impact. Some of these low medium issues actually enable a lot more in the chain. Um, final point I'll talk about here is CVSS authentication. Um, so when you see CV CVSS base course, the authentication field really only has three values, none, low privilege is required or admin privilege is required. What it doesn't really capture though is how easy is it to actually get a credential? Because that's gonna vary a lot from application to application. If you've got an application that has, you know, thousands of users, then chances are one of those users is going to have some weak password or something in place that you can actually get access. Or does the application come with a default password? So now you're relying on someone to actually go and change that default password. If there's a default password and there's nothing that enforces it needs to be changed, there's a good chance that an attacker will try that default password and then get in. And therefore they've already met that requirement. Um, or it could have a weak password policy and, you know, subject to brute forcing and so forth. So when, when you see CVSS authentication vector and it may say privilege is required, authentication is required, which on the surface seems like it should be lower priority, but the reality is it might actually not matter because it could be very easy for an attacker to actually get credentials. So that's another thing to factor in. Uh, 